Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cars of Glasgow. I'm Thomas, and today you join me with Darren inside his Losus Exige. Hello. And in this video, I'm just going to be talking to him about the ownership of a Mark II Lotus Exige and what it's going to be like. So stay tuned for this video. So the first question on my mind is, what was the inspiration behind buying this Lotus Exige? So before the Exige, I used to own an Elise. And before that, I had an E46 M3, which I had for quite a few years. I had it for about six years, the M3. And it was it was quite, I liked the sportiness of it. I liked the way it drove. And I thought, how could I, you know, where can you go from an M3 that I could afford? And I thought, I seen the lease, and it was quite affordable, and I thought, I'll, I'll try one of them out. I was never, not really into Lotuses, didn't know much about them, um, but I seen the lease, and I thought, I'll, I'll give that a go. And I had that for nearly a year, and I liked I liked it, and I thought, well, you know, I want something faster, because the, the lease was, it was nice, but it was, the one I had was 120 horsepower. Okay. Um, so it wasn't, wasn't majorly fast, but it handled really, really nice. I thought, well, I fancy the same kind of platform of car, but with more power. Mm -hmm. And then the Exige came along. Um, so and when about did you buy the Exige? Like how long have you had the car for? So I bought it last July. Okay. So I've had it just over a year. Uh, and that, in that time, I've covered about 10,000 miles. Okay, so a fairly so, a fair uh, amount for an Exige. Yeah, this, this particular one, I checked the MOT history on it. It covered average about 2,000 miles a year. Right. And then I've bought it and then done like nearly what ten thousand yeah, in, a in a year. year so. so definitely seen some sites yeah. last year. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and um, in the last year, where has your favourite kind of adventure road trip been? Where have you taken these each? So, probably the best. I've been to Goodwood Festival Speed twice. Okay. Um, the the day this so sorry, the second day of ownership of this car uh, was at Goodwood Festival Speed. Right. Okay. And yeah. uh, last last summer. And I, I liked it so much. I went back again this year, this summer. I spent the whole four days there. Wow. Um, it was it was pretty good. It was in the performance car park, which was like a almost like a car show in itself at Goodwood mm -hmm. for all the visitors. Um, so it was it was their pride of place. It was it was filthy because <laughs> uh, it was raining. But um, yeah, Goodwood's definitely a highlight of my ownership of this car so far. Yeah, Goodwood is a fantastic. Experience, oh, it's for an sure. amazing, amazing atmosphere. And for anybody watching and unfamiliar with our accents, we are in the west of Scotland, so it's yeah. not like a ten-minute drive, is it? It's a yeah, it took, it took me probably about nine hours just because I had to stop for fuel and mm -hmm. you know toilet stops and etc. But yeah, 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 it's a good drive down. So speaking of fuel, then um, I asked you two questions. Uh, yeah. What is the kind of miles per gallon do you get, and the kind of range on a fuel tank, a fuel tank of petrol? So I measured it once, I've got no MPG reader or anything, yeah. so you've got to do it with a calculator, but roughly I was getting about 33, 34 okay. miles per gallon, uh, and that was a mix of uh, a bit of bypass, some town driving, some spirity driving, Okay. Um, but yeah, roughly around about the 30, I would say. I think if it on track, you would be getting a lot less, Yeah. Um, but to a tank, it's quite a small tank. So I get about 220, 230 miles to a tank. Okay, so probably the tough just <laughs> fill a few times to go yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I don't know the exact size, I think it's around 50 litres, around yeah, about something like take, okay. yeah. And for anybody watching at home, the engine in this car is a 1.8 litre so it's four a cylinder, isn't it? One one point eight 1.8 litre uh, Toyota engine, it's a, the 2ZZ. Okay. Um, which I think came from a Celica GTS, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but it's a 1.8 litre four cylinder and it has um, Toyota's version of like Honda's VTEC, so it's 6,200 RPM. A second cam comes in and you get a lot more power and a lot more noise. And Yeah, because I can see you've uh, got a 10,000 <laughs> RPM. Yeah, the, ta the tack was up to 10, but it red lines around about 8,100 RPM. Okay. Um, and it's, it's quite addictive. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. Um, so what is it like living with an Exige then on your day to day? Uh, so life? I don't I don't actually daily it. Okay. Um, I have I spent about a week. I did actually daily it for a week because my other car was broken, um, and it wasn't comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, it's challenging. It's it's fun. Uh, you could you could daily it. I would say you mm. could daily it, but I wouldn't I wouldn't want to, especially in the in the winter months. Um, on a cold cold damp morning, the the windscreen is quite hard to de to de mist. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it was the most comfortable car for no. even getting in and out, it's a bit of a hassle, but yeah, getting uh, in today was definitely an interesting yeah. challenge. 
So, I bet me to ask a good question is like, what do you love most about and the exige of what do you like about it? So, I guess maybe it's it's kind of obvious, but just how sporty it is to drive. Um, I just I just love when you get to a nice kind of bit of road. It's nice and smooth and. The steering, the steering feels good. It's non power assisted. Okay. So you, you feel everything. You feel all the bumps. You feel all the, like Clarkson said, you feel the difference in the road surfaces mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and you have the handling that goes with it. It just it feels like a cliche word. It feels like a go kart for the roads. Yeah. Or a race car for the roads. Well, but sitting in the cabin, we've got things like your wind down windows. Yeah. There's no big screen like you'd see in a twenty twenty four car. Yeah. I don't even think it's got aircon. Is that right? No air conditioning. No. Even the carpets were optional extras. Yeah, um, and and even the sides isn't carpeted. It's like this exposed metal. Yeah, so, exposed, exposed aluminium. Um, so yeah, it's a lightweight vehicle inside and out, and I guess that's what you're getting. To enjoy the dynamics from. Yeah. Um, is there anything you dislike about Lex Age? So, to get that kind of sportiness, the suspension is quite harsh. Okay. And given the state of our you know roads mm-hmm. these days, that's it can be quite bumpy and quite you know quite kind of jarring sometimes and. Yeah, I don't, I don't like driving on a kind of bumpy road with it because it's just, you, you feel like not only the car's breaking but also your spine can <laughs> feel like it's breaking sometimes. Okay. But, um, but other than other than that, I guess maybe practicality, it's it's not a practical car. The, the boot is, is quite small. Uh, you can just about see the other thing. You can't really see behind that well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's not, not a great deal of space for luggage if you wanted to go on a trip with it, but I guess it's more... More of a car for a Sunday blast or a track day, who yeah. or something that's not a second car. If yeah. Anything, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it was a road trip car such. Although I think you could do it. Be a good challenge to try it. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, it's it's definitely a Sunday a Sunday toy. Yeah, yeah. Um, to enjoy. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Um, what kind of person do you think should buy an Exige? So I think if you're in in the market for something kind of sporty and a bit of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't be put off by Lotus's history of being unreliable. Okay. I know a, a lot of people used to say that Lotus stood for lots of trouble, usually serious. Yeah. Um, I think maybe that was true for the the older cars like the Spree and the XL and things like that. Uh huh. But with with the Exige and in my experience anyway, um, I've had not really any trouble at all. Okay. I had a few issues with the Elise, and I used to say lots of trouble, usually simple. Okay. Um, so I think you know if you're worried about maintenance costs mm-hmm. or you know things breaking down i really wouldn't worry about it at all that they are generally quite reliable cars they've it's a it's a toyota engine yeah um so parts for it are fairly cheap um and yeah i, w- I would i wouldn't let it i wouldn't let that scare you and if you can afford to you know splurge on a a toy mm-hmm. for the weekend then i would highly recommend it yeah Excellent. Well, thank you very much for being on the channel today yeah, no to talk about the Exige and the ownership. I'll leave all that on social media below, so feel free to check him out on YouTube and Instagram. Um, this has been great to have you on it and showcase the car, so thank you. Um, and make sure to subscribe as well to Cars of Glasgow. Comment below your thoughts on the Exige and if you've got any questions, either comment below and I'll pass them to Darren or message him directly. I'm sure he'll happily answer. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys on the next video. Ciao.